uh, limited uh, protection for liability protection for employers. You'll note that uh, this includes a recommendation plus two uh, different options to reflect uh, the conversation that Ms. Roseborough brought up. Um, the great thing about us is we are not legislators. That falls to two distinguished members of our council to determine which option is best. Um, so we can just lay both options out there. Um, barrier. Employers may be subject to civil liability for failing to exercise ordinary care in hiring and retaining employees. They can be found liable for negligent hiring or retention if they knew or should have known of an employee's dangerous or criminal propensities. Recommendation. Require that the Georgia Department of Corrections issue appropriate offenders a certificate that certifies the completion of any required treatment plan and any vocational training while that offender was incarcerated in compliance with any reentry plan while that offender is on probation or parole. The issuance of the certificate shall be in the d discretion of the Department of Corrections and the certificate can be revoked with cause by the department or by any probation or parole officer. And then that brings us into two uh, options. Um, option one, uh, the existence of the four, aforementioned certificate shall create a rebuttable presumption to protect employers or other institutions in all negligence suits related to the employment of, provision of housing to, or admission to educational programs for an ex-offender to whom the certificate was issued so long as the employer or institution knew of the certificate at the time of the ex-offenders act and had it on file in the appropriate op office. Option two, the existence of the aforementioned certificate creates a complete bar to any action against an employer or institution alleging lack of due care in hiring, retaining, leasing to, or admitting to a school uh, or program with respect to the ex-offender to whom the certificate was issued so long as the employer or institution knew of the certificate and had it on file at the time in the appropriate office, the certificate would have no impact on other negligence suits. Ms. Roseboro, does that, do those two options re reflect the debate at the last meeting? Oh, you're a good lawyer. Yes, they do look like a debate. I will concede that. Um, I would say a couple of things. First, I think that uh, the addition of protection uh, related to uh, admission to educational programs and housing, I think, are both uh, high quality additions to the intent there. With respect to number one, in, in the keeping in line with framing the intent of the last debate, I would change the last part of that to say, knew of the certificate at the time of the allegedly negligent act. Uh, because the alleged, this is a, intended to inflect an employer or a school, and the allegedly negligent act is gonna be their act, not the employee's or right. the student's act. Uh, the second, I would note that I would, if, if the legislature went with option one, to be clear that the employer or the institution doesn't have any obligation to go behind the front of the certificate as to its bona fides or to question the judgment of the people who issued the certificate, that they can rely absolutely on the plain language of the certification, at least. Because um, this would suggest that I now have an additional duty, which is to make sure that the certificate was somehow appropriately issued in accordance with, with law and that I wasn't negligent in failing to question uh, the certificate itself. But I think in terms of the, I continue to be of the belief that the objectives are better achieved with option two than option one. And I would encourage us to delete option one and just go with option two. Can, can you send me the, the yes. language that you I will. requested? Okay. Just a question. I, uh, I don't understand this issue quite as well as I probably should. If, uh, does, does, does option two mean that if there is a negligent hiring, perhaps cause of action, that, and you have high, the person involved is an ex-offender, you can never bring that cause of action? If the ex-offender has a certificate, then I cannot be a cause of action for negligently hiring an ex-offender with a certificate. Absolutely, would be barred. What, what, what worries me is that, okay, the, the, you have an offender, uh, you have an employer that hires a truck driver. The truck driver has a record, has a, a criminal record, and he has a certificate. But he doesn't have a license to buy the truck, to run, run, 
drive the truck. So you're quite right. Negligence relates to hiring and because of their status as a part of offender. Right. Not because they failed. If, they're, if I hired them as a nurse and they're not licensed to act as a nurse, that could be an act of negligence even if they also had a drug offense and had a certificate covering that. Right. right. And it looks like two would be a bar even if they didn't have a driver's license. So we could add language that's based on the alleged do care, lack of due care and hiring based on their prior that would be right. yeah, probably going to have to um, look at the evidence code, whether or not that evidence comes in. That's the only practical I think you could kind of tailor it. Because I agree with you that there's a, there's a risk of a broader immunity than what was intended by the council. And one of the ways to do that, if the certificate is, is valid at the time of negligence, that would not be admissible evidence to prove negligence in hiring or whatnot. I should carve it out. That's the way. I would. Last after the last discussion, I was trying to think about how to narrow it down. Something maybe the legislature, Senator Couser, could could uh, handle. Essentially, but that was my original idea that somehow this evidence of a person's criminal record would not be part of a case, could not be brought into the trial, could not be used as a, a, in evidence. But the, you could have other evidence that it was negligent hiring. I. I, I Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think is the I don't think the intent um, is to have any effect on the evidence code. And I think your point is we just need to make sure that we don't have a uh, indirect, yeah, indirect. I think you'll get more resistance on a broader immunity than sure. something that's carved as an evidentiary because we can't predict exactly that evidence might be related to the negligent hiring. If the intent is to make sure that they get a clean slate, we just have to make sure that their history is not used against them or the employer um, not being held um, for taking a chance and hiring them. That's the, that's the general concept, and I don't know that we've really gotten to it yet in the language. Can, can I, if, if I may, um, just a hypothetical testing the logic by an extreme set of facts. You take a sex offender, okay, child molester. Um, it really comes down to what you, what, what you have here where it says require that DOC issue appropriate offenders. Now, it begs right. the question, what's an appropriate offender, okay? So... Well, I think, I, I think that language was left, when, when I was drafting this, that language was left uh, vague uh, on purpose. For, for that reason. For that reason, so that corrections can make that determination. And see, and, and I like, and I think that's very critical in this discussion right now, and I'm trying to bring, connect the two, because it, it, now the question is, well, would DOC issue a certificate to one who's been convicted of child molestation? Now let's extend the hypothetical to what if, and I doubt this would happen, but a daycare facility hiring someone convicted of child molestation, but then has this certificate, okay? So that, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. Well, and I would want to make sure that the certificate covers <coughs> what it's intended to cover. So mm -hmm. let's say a previous child molester had already served their time 10 years ago, now they get rearrested, and Department of Corrections issues the certificate for a drug offense, that that certificate isn't all encompassing to protect the employer of negligent hiring. Well, I, I, I think that A, it hangs on appropriate, and I think that that's in the discretion of the department, as none of us do that for a living. Um, and B, uh, I think that the discretion, uh, the discretion of immediate revocation uh, protects us from that, and you have immense discretion on who to issue it to, and you have immense discretion on when to revoke. Thomas, do you mind if I... Sure, Greg, you? please. Uh, I think one, two, one thing also we need and, to decide is... We're and I'd like Joe Drolet to chime in, too, from the Attorney General's <laughs> office, uh, because I know that it's in... What I think that... Sorry, I, I no, didn't okay. mean to interrupt, but I know that it's very important for the purposes of state liability that we are only cer certifying uh, plan completion. We are only certifying that he's met all the... He or she has met all the conditions. We are not certifying habitability or employability. But, and Joe, I'll let you touch on that. And, and you kind of hit exactly what I want to say. I, the, the comments from the last meeting, um, 
when, when I read this recommendation, I thank you first and foremost because I think it takes exactly what you mentioned in consideration. We can only ensure that someone takes the proper treatment courses that's identified in their case plan. Therefore, you know, when, when we certify somebody, in my mind, we're going to be certifying that they took the courses as identified in their assessment and they completed it. It's kind of like a college degree. When someone finishes and gets that college degree, you don't necessarily know how they're going to act when you hire them, until you hire them. So, so we just got to keep in mind as we talk about what, what the, the commission and the general assembly decides to do on, on the liability side, that that, that certification is not, not going to certify the person who's not ever going to do anything again. And that's why we talk about recidivism in here. And you kind of hit, it, hit the nail on the head there, Thomas, so I kind of just restating what you've already said. Jim? Yeah, and following up on what Greg said, you know, I think we can't be guaranteeing that somebody coming out of a, of a prison facility has been rehabilitated and is not going to commit a crime. And I don't think anything should be done that would imply that, you know, that they've got a certificate and therefore you can hire them and they work here. We, the state, are guaranteeing that they're not going to do anything because I, I don't think we're in a position to really do that. And as Mr. Dover said, all we can really say is they have completed certain courses, reentry programs, whatever. Uh, and what, what that means, you know, whether or not you want to limit somebody's liability because they've completed the course, that's the issue that you're, you're really faced with. As, as the de facto counsel for this council, do you want to come look at this language and see if you have any heartburn about it? <laughs> I'll be happy with it. I was going to say something. Uh, in that case, to Katie Doe's point, it's, it's, it's more the, the certificate be more event related as in, in, in the example, example you gave I think was a good example you have somebody that's got a eight-year-old sexual conviction that has served their time and released then they come back in on a on a forgery you know conviction or a theft or whatever else and so the, the certificate they get they walk out of because they completed these steps and so we're now giving this blanket you know immunity so to speak for somebody that is now going to that's now going to cover the sexual part of that as well even though whenever the case plan uh, was, was set up at this new offense, which was in relation to their current criminal activity, not what they had already done before. So you're actually giving a blanket to the whole history with the one certificate. But I also think that that, I think that, 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 that goes back to the, the word of appropriate offenders. I agree. And I think that that can be promulgated through rules and regs through the department okay. as to who, who gets them. Greg? You know, just, just sitting here and pondering what you're debating, I, I think that the way it's written gives us the authority if someone comes back into our into our supervision, we can then uh, revoke the other certificate and they got a new plan waiting for a new certificate based on that. Okay. The question will be is, is as you write the legislation, things of that nature, if they have if they have already supposedly gone through and been rebuilt rehabilitated uh, does a liability need to be taken away when they've shown a history of, of recommitting? And that's something that, as the General Assembly convenes and this council wants to weigh in, you've you got to take that into consideration. Yeah. There's a lot of devil in the details yeah. about how you're going to notify an employer that it's been revoked or there's going to subsequent thing. And I don't know that this committee necessarily <laughs> needs to get in all those details. That's why the legislature figures all the hard stuff out. Um, you know, I, I Make you excited for my day? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, but I think, like, you know, if you had a certificate that said Jason was convicted of possession and he's completed a motivation for change and a, and a uh, substance abuse course, and that was on the certificate, mm -hmm. that's pretty specific about this is what you did and this is what you've done to be reformed, and you got a certificate saying you completed that treatment. Um, and that would kind of limit the sex offender from 10 years ago that now gets a possession case and goes through drug treatment yeah. certificate would be. That, but I don't think that's something our committee does. I think that's something that... I think that's something that the legislature does. And I, think it's, I think it's the legislature's, legislature's purview to um, uh, drill down on exactly what the bar does and how far the bar goes. And I think it's corrections purview through rules and regs through the Board of Corrections as to what what the definition of appropriate is. 
uh, and uh, when uh, and what uh, are the you know flags or the benchmarks whereby uh, you need to immediately revoke and how those employers are notified and and, and stuff and like that. Mechanism for re revocation. We right. think have to be like a probation revocation. Or and so I, I think the important thing to do here is have language that reflects the intent um, and you know keep in mind none of this is binding this is all just you know suggestions uh, that reflects our intent knowing and trusting that the legislature and the department will uh, you know uh, do what what's necessary to uh, implement and execute the, the recommendation should they choose to take it up so with that I think that the, that initial recommendation part, including the language of appropriate, probably uh, allows for that, and maybe um, uh, maybe drop a footnote in there or something, uh, saying that uh, obviously GDC would have to pass by rules and regs. Uh, um, uh, who who meets this crap? Who is appropriate? And, uh, and a, a, a method whereby it's revoked and a method of notification when it is revoked. And then, Ms. Roseborough, if, if you and I can work on the language for option two um, and get that, I think that kind of reflects where everybody is in an agreement here, unless, Joe? One other little complication. Oh. <laughs> the recommendation itself, there are two sort of conflicting ideas here. The first is, Anybody that completes certain courses gets a certificate. Okay, so that, and that certificate doesn't guarantee that they're rehabilitated, but if you complete courses, the certificate simply says you completed it. Okay, the next sentence though says that the issuance of the certificate shall be at the discretion of the Department of Corrections. So the question now is completing the course doesn't get you the certificate. What does? And, and, what is going to be a basis for granting it? And if some people get it and some people don't, does that imply? That How about the authorize the Georgia Department of Corrections to issue? So they are, they're authorized to do it, but it, we're not requiring them to do it. Well, you, you may still have an issue, though. Of, do they automatically do it when someone completes a course? And all they're saying is they completed the course, or do they not do it when the person completes the course? If they don't automatically do it, by what is the criteria by which they're not doing it, or they are granting this? What is the the significance of the certificates if it isn't just for completing the course? Does it imply that the person has been rehabilitated and therefore you can hire them and corrections has in some way guaranteed that they uh, they are employable and they aren't going to commit another crime? That's that's the problem. That I don't think it implies any of this implies a guarantee. But what, yes. what it just says is on the back end, if you take a chance on this person, then, the, then we're not going to come back and hammer you if you get hired next, next, uh, next offender. Right. We're going we're gonna to limit your liability so that employers will be willing to take a chance on the people. Okay, we're sort of losing the, you know, sort of losing the point here in the details. Right. But my, my concern, though, is not the employer's liability, which we're trying to limit. My concern is bringing the state in as having take an action and guarantee something in some way, which potentially uh, could be in the, in the interest of time, I suggest, uh, uh, Joe, I will get the language, Ms. Roseborough's edits, and then I'll sit down with you in the Attorney General's office, update this language, and send it back out to the council for a vote, uh, because I think there is enough uh, discussion here that requires uh, this to be seen by all eyes again. However, I think that I'm comfortable enough to say that we're all in uh, agreement with the spirit of this and we're just trying to make sure that this is done correctly so is everybody okay with that path forward for this this recommendation okay.